behavior within the different corporations. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to appreciate the role uh, of UNODC as a global organization to pulverize, leverage, and to take forward this mission of creating a more ethical and more integrity-centered and more accountable world, especially in the corporate sector. So what they did was that they created a project which is called the Global Integrity Education Project in which Siemens is the main engine behind it and they selected three countries and the three countries are Pakistan, Mexico and Africa, three different continents so that they could inculcate the values and the philosophy and the different aspects, dimensions and models of integrity and accountability and anti-corruption within the education sector, which would then garner and harness and train and educate the youth leadership, which would later on be taking the leadership positions, not only in these three countries, but also around the world. Now, this Global Integrity Education Project basically is hinged upon the fact that there is a global working group, which has created 24 modules on integrity, accountability, and anti-corruption to create a more ethical world, to create a more morally responsible corporate leadership and to ensure that in those countries or those societies where unethical practices have reached astronomical levels, they have to be brought down so that we can create better societies, create a merit-oriented environment and also encourage better competition and in that competition, there would be better performance and optimization of resources. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what happened is that then three working groups were basically created in Pakistan, Mexico, and in Kenya. And over there, what happened is that they identified different universities. So in Pakistan, the universities which were identified were LUMS, was University of Central Punjab, University of Management and Technology, uh, Punjab University, uh, FAST, and also University of Lahore. So there was a pilot cohort and then there was a second cohort in which a total of 97 master teachers or master trainers or master professors have been certified as integrity certified professors. And they went through a very comprehensive training which was hybrid in nature in encapsulated all of these different things to, to basically focus on four modules. And two of them we are studying over here. The first one, ethical leadership. The second one, challenges of ethical uh, behavior. The third one is ethical behavior. And the fourth one is the different techniques uh, involved in anti-corruption. So again, these four modules were selected and this faculty has been trained. And now, inshallah, more than 10,000 students are going to be uh, sensitized, are going to be integrated into this integrity framework so that they can go into the practical field and work as ethics ambassadors. So, ladies and gentlemen, the question is that you also are being certified and you also are being trained in these two modules initially. And then we will see if we can also incorporate the other two so that you become better equipped about what is going to happen in the future and how we can create an integrity-infused environment. And that is what we aim to do and what we are going to be studying. I'm also going to complement all of this with about four or five case studies, very interesting case studies that we are going to be doing and you really are going to like them. So, boys and girls, we'll be moving forward and I would like to appreciate the UNODC and all of the stakeholders for doing all of this work and we'll be sharing it over here with you so that you are attuned, aligned to the future of integrity, accountability and anti-corruption. Well, boys and girls, as we tend to move forward, we'll just look at why do individuals behave unethically. So, first of all, a company comprises of people. People own and run the company. Individual character of the people has direct influence on the operational practices 
of the company. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we see is, is that a company as such is just a virtuosity and does not have any organic substance on its own. The building block of any company are its employees and the employees have their own set of knowledge, their own competencies, their own abilities, their own skill sets and most importantly their own attitude, their own values, their own traditions, their own customs, their own norms, their own comprehension, their own experiences. They bring all of that over there and the cumulative whole of all of that is the organization. Now, when we see all of this, then a very common saying also comes to my mind that one bad egg can spoil all of the eggs. So, many a time it is very important for the human resource department or for the top management to ensure that they get the best candidates who are ethically attuned and have strong value systems so that the organization can have a vibrant, positive, proactive and engaging environment in which everyone has an opportunity to grow and go up the ladder of success and performance based upon merit, performance and their own inputs. So, that is extremely important. Now, in the coming sessions, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to see what are these unethical behaviors and when we are talking about them, what contributes to these different behaviors. First of all, the pressure to balance work and family life. Now, we call that the uh, work-life balance uh, and many sessions and many philosophies, many research studies have been done on it to create that work-life balance. It is very difficult. Actually, it might be idealistic to create a balance because there is so much of imbalance. There are so many turpitudes taking place that it becomes very difficult to balance. But if it becomes more tilted on one side, then it tends to affect the other part which can result in unethical behavior because of the stress, the depression and that intensity of workload. So, it's very important to rationalize and we usually talk about something which is called burning out. We have to save our employees and the individuals from burning out, from getting frustrated, from getting overwhelmed by the work and the environment which is around them so that they can come out with the best in them, not the worst in them. The second thing which tends to contribute to unethical behavior in employees and a very common factor and that is poor communication between the company and its employees. Now, many times the company thinks that it is indulging in very good communication. It has many communication platforms. It has many communication uh, mediums. But despite all of that, the communication is not correct. It's very important to understand that different individuals have different comprehensions. It's not that one message is being understood by everyone. Therefore, it is the responsibility of the organization to ensure that whatever message they are sending out, it should be comprehended and understood by its employees at all levels from top to bottom. Secondly, what is the message? And then, is it only a message? Is it only the talk shock or is it the walk the talk? When people start seeing things happening, then they start understanding and following them. So, that is very important. So, if someone is saying that there should be an environment of cleanliness or there will be zero tolerance on cleanliness, but the CEO is throwing things out of the dustbin and the CEO is sometimes eating a sandwich and, and, and throwing um, the, the paper bag somewhere else uh, like a basketball or uh, is just leaving a bottle somewhere in the parking lot and anything like that, then maybe uh, there won't be any cleanliness because uh, seeing is believing. So, therefore, very important to have uh, verbal communication, but even more than verbal communication, it is demonstrable, demonstrable communication. What is seen? What are the actions? How are those beliefs turned into implementation? That is extremely important and that leads to a better work environment within a particular organization. So, ladies and gentlemen, when we are talking about unethical behavior, these two things are uh, great contributors either to ethical behavior or to unethical behavior. Poor leadership of the company, just like I was mentioning, very important to have ethical value-based leaders. That is why this Global Integrity Education Program, which is being sponsored by Siemens and being uh, catalyzed and leveraged by UNODC and the UN, they are trying to create a more responsible, uh, more value-based, 
more ethically oriented leadership and then spread them across the corporate world so that we have better competition, we have better performance, we have better optimization, and we have people who are self responsible and believe in doing good, in getting good, and ensuring that there is good and there is morality within their actions, within their policies, within their products, within their services, and within their organizations. And for that, we need to have a good leadership and a leadership which believes in that value and have an attitude and behavior which reflects upon that particular attitude. And then it could be lack of motivation by the company. Why? Because of hypocrisy, because of duplication, because of multiplication, because of a disparity between what is being said and what is being done and discrimination, bias, favoritism, nepotism, all of these things lead to lack of motivation. And just like I was mentioning earlier that if we tend to put for a sustainable or for a long time span a, a, a heavy workload, then that also tends to pull the employee down and compromise on his or her actions. So, ladies and gentlemen, all of these things are contributors. If they are taking place, it would lead to a negative, adverse, uh, non-conducive environment. But if it, they are implemented in the right way, you could create a positive, conducive, healthy, energized, vibrant, happy environment, which is extremely important. And you can read the book also uh, written by Dr. Clayton Christensen, and that is How Do I Measure My Life? How Can I Make My Life Better and Move Forward? It's a worth reading book, and I will also talk about that book in the coming sessions. Take care. Thank you so much.